And now the question is, how do species remain separate species? So we've seen examples in which species can interbreed with each other, even though they're not members of the same species. If everyone could interbreed, we would have just a hybrid, the world made out of hybrid species and not really separate species. So what is keeping these species separate as discrete groups of um, species? One such mechanism is geographical isolation. If they live in different areas, but they will not be able to find each other and reproduce, like the example of tigers and lions. So if they never meet each other, they will remain separate species because they just cannot encounter each other. But you could also have ecological isolation, so that even though they might live in the same area, they might never find each other because they use different habitats within that same area. The important point I want to make out here is that habitat is not the same as geographical location. So geographic location is the uh, area, country, uh, the space that they actually occupy. Well, habitat is within a particular space. Do they use the habitat of the high branches or do they use the habitat of the middle branches? So this is in the same geographic location, they can use different habitats. And that's the example of these lizards. There is a very interesting video about the lizards of the Caribbean that please watch that shows examples of, of this type of uh, geographic isolation. Species can also be separated by temporal isolation. This is when they breathe at different points in time. So for example, one species breathes in the winter and the other one in the summer, they will never be able to interbreed because they are breeding at different points in time. You can also have behavioral isolation. This is when the mating mechanisms or the mating behaviors of one species is different from the other. So for example, a bird that the male sings spe uh, one song to attract the females and males of another species will have a different song. So the females would only be attracted to the males of their own species. You can also have mechanical isolation. This is the case where the copulatory organs of the species simply cannot match each other, so they cannot interbreed because they cannot do so mechanically. And finally, the last type of reproductive isolation is gamet uh, gametic incompatibility, or the gametes cannot fuse so that the sperm is not able to fertilize the egg, and as a result, the species cannot interbreed. So these are all examples of pre-zygotic mechanisms, pre-zygotic meaning before the zygote forms. As you remember, the zygote is the first cell that forms after the egg and the sperm has fertilized. So if there is no, everything that happens before the zygote forms, everything that happens before the egg is fertilized is a mechanism of pre-zygotic isolation. But sometimes there is no mechanism of prezygotic isolation, and even though the the uh, animals are able to mate, they coincide in time, they live in the same area, and their behaviors are not different enough that still allow them to interbreed, and their gametes fuse, and the zygote is produced. Now you have mechanisms of postzygotic isolation, and an example of this is the case of the mule that we talked earlier. So even though a horse and a donkey can interbreed, the resulting offspring is infertile. So this is a type of reproductive isolation that happens post-zygotic. So this is a case of hybrid infertility. You can also have hybrid inviability, and this is when the zygote doesn't develop into a baby. So somewhere the embryo stops developing. Species can further enhance their reproductive isolating mechanisms in areas in which they overlap or they might coexist. So for instance, this uh, fly catchers, they have, we have two different species. One inhabits mostly northern Europe and the other one inhabits southern Europe and, and um, the Balkans. And these two species, the ones that are far geographically isolated, the ones all the way in the north and the ones all the way in the south that don't find each other, look very similar. So that will create a problem for reproductively isolated mechanisms. But when you look in the area here in yellow, the area where they overlap, where they live together, the individuals of these species look very different from each other. So now this pie fly catcher looks very different from the species, the same species on the north, 
but this new form helps it distinguish from the other species that lives in the same area. So this way, by enhancing their differences in the areas where they overlap, they are less likely to reproduce. There is also a similar concept, as um, you're going to see it in, in one of the other chapters, of character displacement, and the same phenomenon happens, but it's not for reproductive reasons, but for biological reasons. So the species, when they live in the same area, they might acquire different morphologies so that they can use different resources and reduce competition for resources. So if they have a different morphology, they can specialize in a different resource when they live together, and that way they can coexist and reduce competition.